It is Friday, the 2nd of December, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. We're now in chapter 2 of the Gospel according to Matthew, and we come to part of Matthew's story that's perhaps most familiar to us around Christmas time. Here we find the story of Herod and the star and the wise men from the east. It begins by saying, in the time of King Herod, and we should stop there for a moment. Now, for some of the people of Israel, it might seem that King Herod, because he's the king, is somehow the one who's supposed to deliver them from things. Maybe he's the one who's the Messiah, huh? But the truth is, Herod is a puppet of Rome. He's been installed by Caesar in order to rule the people, not as a Jewish king, but as a Roman official. King Herod was a ruthless and brutal king. He killed his own relatives. He was a man crazed with his own image and power, and he was afraid of everything because he thought he might lose his power at any minute. It made him a terrifying and brutal king. So we're told in the time of King Herod, the ally of Rome, the brutal and nuts kind of king, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Now a word about Bethlehem. That's where David's from. Once again, Matthew wants to pound home the point that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the same place as David. He comes from the house of David. King Herod doesn't. He was not born in Bethlehem. He is not of David. Jesus is. We're told then that after this happened, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, where the king lived, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? It's an innocent question. They observed a star as it rose. Now, these wise men are most likely from Persia, probably Zoroastrian in their religion. Now, you might ask what a Zoroastrian is. Well, it's an ancient part of Persian culture that still exists today. For those of you who are rock and roll fans, Freddie Mercury of Queen was a Zoroastrian. They observed the star because they watched the night skies, and so they logically get led to... Jerusalem, where the king is. They figure that the baby must be laying somewhere around the the, the holy palace, uh, probably born of King Herod, but they're wrong. The result is, when King Herod heard this, he was frightened, terrified, and all Jerusalem was frightened with him. Because if Herod is scared, we should all be scared, because we don't know what crazy thing he's going to do next. So Herod calls together all the chief priests and scribes, and he inquires of them where the Messiah was to be born. Herod knows down deep he ain't the Messiah. So where was he to be born? Now, it's interesting to me that a guy who claims to be the king of Judea doesn't know his own scriptures, but that's telling. There are lots of people who claim to have God on their side who have no idea what the faith is all about. So the scribes come back and they say he will be born in Bethlehem of Judea, So it's been written by the prophet. They give him the prophetic city of David as the place. So then Herod calls the the wise men back, and you know how the story goes. He learns from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He doesn't know. Then he sends them to Bethlehem, and he says, Go and search for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me where he is, so that I might honor him. Big fat lie. We already know this won't go well. When they heard the king, they set out and they went to Bethlehem. And all of a sudden, the star reappeared and it led them to where Jesus was. They were overwhelmed with joy. They were in the presence of some great thing. And we know what that great thing is. This is the offspring of Abraham, the offspring of David. This is the Messiah. This is the one who will return the people and fulfill the promises. When they entered the house, 
When they saw the child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and paid homage to him. Then they gave him gifts, three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, a little bit of a point here. We always assume that there are three wise men, but it never says that. It says there are three gifts. Could have been lots more wise men. Could have been two wise men with three gifts. It doesn't really matter. The gifts they give are gold, which of course is valuable, which is a way of sustaining the king, making an offering. Actually, it might even be seen as a way of saying, may I be part of your rule? Because you pay your treasure to the king that you honor. And then they give frankincense and myrrh, which are resins, aromatic resins. They have two purposes, basically. One is for worship, uh, used as incense to cleanse, um, used to uh, make an offering go up so that God can, uh, can receive it with the, the beautiful smell that comes with it. So they're used for worship, but they're also used for burial. There's a double meaning here that gives us just a little bit of a hint of what's to come already. Then it tells us, having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, it seems God is on the watch, even with foreigners, but we know that from the genealogy already. They go back to their own country by a different way. They avoid him altogether. And so therefore they keep Jesus hidden from Herod. The wise men reveal that not only the people of Judah know of the king who comes from the house of David, but that all the nations are beginning to come. These wise men are just the first of all who will worship Jesus who are not of the house of Judah. Part of the promise to David and Abraham is that all the nations All the nations will be gathered together in peace. And here we see that promise start to be fulfilled. Let us pray. Our gracious and good God, you revealed yourself not only to the people of Judah, to the family of David, but you revealed yourself as God with us to the nations They came streaming by the light of a star to worship and to honor you. Lord, you also kept that knowledge from those who would harm your purposes. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to do the same thing, that you would draw people of faith and righteousness to yourself, and, Lord, that you would hide all that can be damaged from those who seek to do evil. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.